A couple of episodes ago, I've talked about how Say You singing or having solo careers is not something that started in the noughties or the tens. It started way back in the 80s with several Seiyu standing out for their solid singing skills, impressive technique and unique tones. Some of these Seiyu had solo careers, others were responsible for making Seiyu units a thing, while others showed that Seiyu can be rock stars. Now, and since you and I are on the topic following the theme on episode 79, it is time to cover several veteran Seiyu that have singing skills well worth checking out. Let's kick off this episode of Seiyu Lounge. Welcome to Seiyu Lounge, I am your host Vanessa and today's topic is Veteran Seiyu with amazing singing skills. For those that have been following Seiyu Lounge's episodes, you may have noticed that by following the current events, most of the Seiyu I've mentioned that are in the spotlight or are highly regarded for their singing skills are from a younger generation. What some people may not be aware, either because you may be new to Seiyu, or perhaps because you don't fancy older sounding voices, is that there's no shortage of awesome singing voices among today's veteran Seiyu. Who is considered a veteran Seiyu? This is a question that you may be asking yourself, especially if any of your favorite Seiyu are getting close to their 40s. In Japan, Seiyu in that age group are considered veterans, however, I don't feel it actually reflects that well their experience. Yes, their age fits their definition of veteran, but not always their experience reflects that. Most Seiyu are still in peak popularity in their 40s. Some don't even have a big body of work under their belts or have started their careers really late as voice actors that when they are in their 40s, they barely have a decade of work to their name. So yeah, the denomination veteran is used in a kind of a loose way and I don't really feel like it is used correctly by most people, especially internationally. Thus, for purposes of this episode, all veteran Seiyu I'll be mentioning have at least 25 years of career in the Seiyu industry, regardless if they are 30 years old or if they are 60 years or older. Experience is at the core of this episode more than age itself. Still, I wanted to bring as many older Seiyu to the spotlight as possible, as they are often overlooked by Seiyu fans. Like I mentioned in the intro, some of the Seiyu mentioned in this episode have had solo careers, others fronted bands or were even at the vanguard of the music industry by joining what would end up being the pioneer Seiyu units and 2D groups. Please know that this is not an extensive feature about each Seiyu, but a summary covering their singing tone, skills, standout performances and any other bits of trivia or interesting information that I may consider relevant for you to understand why they are awesome. Without further ado, let's check each of these seiyu. Koichi Yamadera If there is a voice that, no matter how many years pass by and continues to make everyone swoon, is Koichi Yamadera's. Koichi Yamadera is the best paid male seiyu, at least anime and narration-wise, having made a career in narration and being quite the prolific voice actor in the 80s and 90s before his career started to slow down a bit in the noughties. He's still a staple in the voice acting industry in Japan, respected by fellow voice actors and fans alike. For those that are not familiar with Koichi Yamadera, he's got a warm, deep baritone voice. However, it is worth noticing that Yamadera is owner of a massive vocal range. Being able to perform comfortably as a deep bass singer, a baritone, as well as a tenor. This is something that keeps on impressing everyone that comes across him. That vocal range is insane. He's got what you'd consider to be a classic voice that fits really well jazz and blues. 
but fear not that he can perform basically any music genre, fitting it like a glove. Yamadera's singing tone is honeyed at all times, and the power he brings to his performances immediately will make you want to stop everything and just listen to his performance. It's that mesmerizing. And in case you're wondering, Yamadera was one of the very first male CEO to kick off a career as a solo artist. Having made his solo debut in 1990, releasing four singles and two full-length albums before calling it quits on his career as a singer in 1998. And he can sing in English with a clean pronunciation. Really, is there anything Yamadera can't do? All this to say that if you haven't checked Yamadera singing, then it's time for you to do so. Songs that highlight his singing skills include Arabian Nights, the version from 2019, from the Aladdin movie, dub. It's a song in which the sheer power and control in a theatrical performance will make you stop everything. Then you have the song Everybody Wants To Be A Cat, from Disney Koi no Ojisama Vol. 2. Seldom do you listen to a voice actor in a duet with himself. Well, this is one of those rare cases with Yamadera performing in both bass and baritone registers. Toshiki Morikawa The original rock star among male seiyuu, Toshiki Morikawa is owner of a powerful voice and still to this day is one of the most consistent and reliable singers among male seiyuu. He's owner of a strong baritone voice with quite the range to himself being able to tap into the bass range with some ease. Morikawa is one of those singers with a unique timbre that you can find everywhere. There is a rawness to it, almost a raspy twist to it, while being at the same time insanely clear to the ears. He's not the type to belt, so don't really expect that, but if you want a heart-wrenching performance or a shredding high-octane rock performance, he can deliver that and more. Morikawa is a massive fan of the rock band Guns N' Roses and you can notice that both in the sound of his rock band, Black Velvet, as well as in the way that he emulates Axl Rose in his singing style, especially in those dragging long notes in crescendo that you can find a bit all over Guns N' Roses' repertoire as well as Black Velvet's. Aside from being the frontman for the rock band Black Velvet, Morikawa used to be a solo artist, having kicked off his career in 1994, ending up activities in 2003 after releasing three albums to his name. He's also part of the classic seiyu unit Two Heart with Fumihiko Tachiki since 2004. The group has not released music in years, but from time to time they perform alongside the members of Ore Para. With all being said, Toshiki Morikawa not only is a massive name that you can't avoid when you start watching anime, but is also an experienced singer that was there when male seiyuu started to venture as solo artists, made it a cool thing to be a seiyuu and a rock star at the same time, and continues to impress with his power and control time and time again. Songs that highlight his singing skills include Once Upon a Dream from the Disney date Koi no Ojisama CD, a powerful rock rendition of a Disney classic counting with a rock star performance on top. You weren't expecting that? And basically, he rocks the stage. And then, I Still song performed with Black Velvet. It is a power ballad that no one knew they needed, but as soon as you come across it, you can't get enough of Morikawa's emotional performance and unique timbre. Kazuhiko Inoue A legend among male seiyuu and the oldest seiyuu featured in his episode, Kazuhiko Inoue is no stranger to singing. Inoue made his solo debut in 1980, releasing three singles and three full-length albums in the 29 years he was active as a solo artist. He called it quits on his solo career in 2009, only making an exception to that with the release of a covers album in 2012. With vast experience as a singer and easily one of the very first male seiyuu to make a solo debut, if not the very first one that started this whole thing of seiyuu also having solo careers, Inoue is a name you shouldn't avoid when checking male seiyuu music 
if not for the quality, at least for the history that is associated to his solo career being a pioneering one. Inoue has a sweet high baritone voice with some vibrato on top. Contrasting with his bass speaking voice, this dynamic works really well for him, being able to pull off unique performances in all songs in his repertoire, as well as the character songs he's performed over the years. In 2021, Kazuhiko Inoue joined the Station Idol Latch franchise, becoming the oldest male seiyuu to join a 2D music project and proving that age is just a number because he still knows how to deliver a good performance. Songs that highlight his singing skills. Believe in You from the Naruto character song CD series as Kakashi. The sweetness in his voice makes this rock ballad shine. Plus bonus points because more than half of the song is performed in English. Then you have Aitsuwa Wasa no Bicycle. The title track from Inoue's second single is a classic pop tune with a bouncy, almost romantic pop meets surfer rock vibe and a fun performance on top showcasing his consistency as a baritone. Show Hayami. Booming low baritone and high bass vocals with a honeyed delivery. Shohayami is one of the very first male seiyuu to embark on a solo career, having a really solid one for over a decade. He kicked off his solo career in 1992 and was active until 2007 when he called quits to focus on voice acting in anime and narration work. During the time he was active as a solo artist, he was best known for performing love songs and ballads, most of those in city pop style, with his bass vocals and emotional range being the perfect complement. When it came to performing character songs, Hayami showed yet again his prowess, performing songs that resonate with the listener. He was there when the Angelique series kicked off, franchise that pioneered the concept of character songs. Although it seemed that Hayami had put down the mic and had no intentions of returning to activity as a singer, or even by performing character songs, in 2017 he joined the Hypnosis Mic franchise after much insistence and persistence by the project's creators. And thus, Sho Hayami turned into the very first veteran seiyuu to join a rap or hip-hop project and actively rap in said project. This was crazy. I remember when the announcement was made, many people were incredulous, worrying if Hayami would feel good tackling something so far from what he was best at. Turns out that with the guidance of Subaru Kimura, Hayami discovered his style as a rapper, closer to narration and talking with an emphasis in the emotional delivery on top of his imposing bass vocals. And he built up his confidence, turning into a solid rapper within the project. Somehow, even unintentionally, Sho Hayami showed that it was possible for veteran voice actors to actually try new things, challenge themselves, because as long as the effort is put into their work, everyone will welcome them with open arms. So if you're into ballads, I welcome you to check his solo artist repertoire. The songs or albums may be really hard to find, but if you scour the web, you'll come across snippets of the songs and will be pleasantly surprised. If you're more into contemporary music and fancy a bit hip-hop music, then I welcome you to check his performances with Matenro. There are some hauntingly beautiful and introspective ones in the crew's repertoire. Songs that highlight his singing skills include Make You Heki, Jinguji Jakurai's solo character song. It is a haunting performance delivered using his bass range, with his rap flow setting a dark, introspective tone to the song. And Garnitures, from Garnitures, the solo single released in 2000. It is a sweet performance on top of a cool original city pop sound that will take you to a laid-back soundscape. Nobuto Shikana Underrated even when he was active as a solo artist, Nobuto Shikana was the lead vocal of the pioneering Seiyuu unit sensation 
EMU from 1995 to 2000. And on the side, he was also a solo artist performing a cool brand of rock music from 1995 to 2009. Kana has quite the range to himself, being a skilled high baritone able to tap into four bass range. He's got a unique timbre that makes him easily noticeable in whichever song he performs. He's got a good control over his tone, sounding comfortable in a higher range as well as when he taps into his four bass range. Despite what many fans may think following the character songs he's performed in the Dynasty Warriors games franchise, Nobutoshi Kana's natural singing range is not that of a bass, and the raspiness you can listen in those songs is intentional, and also not something he naturally has in his singing. That can be easily noticeable when you compare those songs to his work with EMU, as well as his solo work in which he performs using his natural singing range, a baritone. Regardless, Kana has solid singing skills that still make his performances a treat to listen to. And let's not forget that two decades ago, he was easily one of the most exciting singers active in the seiyuu industry. Songs that highlight his singing skills. Doshitemo Wasurerarenai, character song from the Angelique series as Randy. A really cool rock tune performed in a high, clean baritone or low tenor range. And Starlight Stardust from Kana's fourth album of the same name. Kana brought groovy rock and cranked up those 80s vibes for this song, delivering a fancy performance with plenty of vibrato in there. Takehito Koyasu if there is someone with a really unique timbre among male seiyuu, it is Takehito Koyasu. However, most people coming across him will primarily talk about the Jojo series, completely disregarding the awesome career and the several memorable roles he has voiced over the years. On top of that, most people will not be familiar with him as a solo artist, but may be aware of those slightly mimish photos of him posing while wearing a really tight black leather or vinyl outfit. That's in a way a pity yet understandable, it's been 20 years since he last called quits to his solo career. Takehito Koyasu not only is a legendary voice actor owning one of the most easily recognizable voices in the seiyuu industry, but was also, in the 90s, one hell of an amazing pop rock artist. He was active as a solo artist from 1992 up until 2001, releasing 15 CDs. His sound and image were heavily inspired by Larkin Ciel and Hyde, with his music having a sort of a decadent, almost ballad twist to itself. He not only performed as himself, but also as his visual K alter ego, Zazel. And let me tell you, it is bloody awesome the music he released as Zazel from 2000 to 2001. And now comes the surprise. Although Takehito Koyasu has a booming bass voice when speaking, and most of his roles in anime and games require him to use that booming imposing register, Koyasu is actually a baritone as a singer, a sweet one to boot. He was not the most technical of singers, yet he was making the best out of his singing tone and skills to deliver emotional performances in songs that were far from sounding upbeat. He was also part of Vice Kreutz, the first ever 2D group that later on turned into an incredibly popular seiyuu unit. Songs that highlight his singing skills include Monochrome Ni Somari Yukumachide. It is a down-tempo emo rock song performed as Zazel that highlights his emotional range as well as a bit of his technique with falsetto being prominent. And Back to Heaven, song from the CD Mary and the Kitten, released in 1999 and performed as himself. It is one of the heaviest and grooviest rock songs in his repertoire, with a surprisingly soft yet incredibly intense performance on top. Takaya Kuruda 
another rock star joins this feature. Takaya Kuroda is a name that many quickly associate as the face of the Yakuza games. And those that have played the games have come across the songs he performed as Kiryu, the game's protagonist, whenever there is a karaoke available in those. Takaya Kuroda is an absolute beast of a rock star, a cool one to boot. He's got a booming bass voice, natural vibrato, although rather subtle, and his control and consistency are quite impressive. Over the years, he has been showcasing his singing skills with his rock band, Kuroda Takaya and Goodfellas, and although the band is far from being popular, Kuroda rocks small live houses while spreading his charms and the band's genuinely awesome rock sound. Most recently, in 2019, Kuroda joined the Hypnosis Mike franchise, following Sho Hayami's steps and what fans got was something unexpected. How would the ever cool rock star fit in a hip hop project? Fairly well. He brought his booming vocals and completely embraced the intimidating and dandy vibe of Rei Amayado, leading to an impressive set of performances. Kuroda instantly fit well with the project and his laid back vibe added a layer of coolness to Dotsuitare Hompo and the Hypnosis Mike franchise. Pleasing rock and hip-hop fans alike, Takaya Kuroda is a seiyuu you can't miss if you're looking for effortlessly cool performances with a rock-solid consistency. Songs that highlight his singing skills include Moichido Moshi Umare Kawatara. It is a beautiful piano-led power ballad with Kuroda's emotional bass vocals on top. And Faces, Rei Amayado's solo track in the Hypnosis Mike franchise. Powerful and intimidating, this is a track that highlights Takaya Kuroda's fancy laid-back rap flow. As you and I wrap up this feature, it is interesting to find that most of you that I ended up picking for it are either booming bass singers or baritones. This was a sample of the old-school talent with sweet, low voices that reverberate in your ears and with really good emotional ranges to boot. One thing is for certain after this brief coverage of their careers and awesome singing skills. There is a lot of talent among veteran male seiyuu. Talent is genuinely everywhere in the Seiyu industry. It is a matter of going past the buzzworthy names, the young rising talents, the stars, and you'll come across the stars of old, the old school talents that took their first steps when the music industry sneered at voice actors and what they could be able to achieve. There was talent in between all the Seiyuu that took a jump at trying to earn easy money by singing in the 90s and noughties. But honestly, nothing has really changed as you move on from the 90s to the noughties, to the 10s and to this decade. It's the same. You now have around 20 or 40 solo artists active among male Seiyuu. Those that are genuinely good singers and create music that differentiates them from the competition, that actually care about the art they create or the entertainment they provide are very few. I dare say 10 or 15 maximum. These are the ones that in a decade or two will be viewed as impressive singers among veterans say you. Those are the ones that will be remembered for their awesome singing skills. Hopefully, the hand that feeds HQ is still around in a decade or two and I am here talking to you on episode 2000 about the veteran Seiyuu that had awesome singing skills and then names like Toshiki Toyonaga, Soma Saito, Mamoru Miyano, Yumuchida, Shotaoi, Makoto Furukawa and Daiki Yamashita and many more are going to be dropped in that episode. All this to say that quality is not tied to popularity nor with age. You can find it pretty much everywhere and no matter how many years go by, those that were good singers, unless something weird happens, will continue to be good singers when they get well into their 40s, 50s and even older. 
If this episode is proof of anything, is that there are incredibly talented singers among veterans. There is actually a deep pool of talent among those that people will now deem as old. On my end, I'd say I'm a fan of Koichi Yamadera, Toshiki Morikawa and Takehito Koyasu's singing. The latter, especially during his Zazel alter ego era. They are among some of the Seiyu I first come across when watching Seiyu events back in 2010. Because of the Neo Romance events or even games events. And their vocals impressed me back then and still continue to impress me. Of course, they are no longer active as solo artists or frontmen for their bands, but whenever they get the chance to perform a character song, those memories of old instantly come back. They are too good. Regardless of whether you are a new or old school fan of Seiyu, do give a chance to veterans. There is one big reason why they are returning to the spotlight with 2D music projects. They still got it. Now tell me, which is or are the veteran male Seiyu that you can't help but love their singing skills? Let me know in the comments below, and remember, leave your comments as complex or as simple as they may be, and you can be featured on upcoming episodes of Seiyu Lounge. If you enjoyed this episode and don't want to miss the Hand That Feeds HQ's weekly email Seiyu and music-related content, hit the subscribe button. I'll return next week with another episode of Seiyu Lounge. Thank you for listening, and see you guys around.